Last week, we talked about combined flux E equal to Q plus 1 over 2 rho V square plus rho H V plus tau dot V. Okay? The first term here is conduction. These two terms are result from convection. Of course, this one is part of the work. This one is part of the convection. But there will be no work if the fluid does not move. So if you don't have convection, this term will be zero. Or you can see from the variable, if there is no convection, that means velocity of the media is supposed to be zero. So V here is zero. V there is zero. So what you have left is just conduction term, combined flux equal to Q. Okay? Now, if I want to do shell balance, what does the shell look like? If I use this is Z direction, R direction, what does the shell look like? It's supposed to be something like this. Right? As we said earlier, normally the direction which has difference in temperature supposed to have shell with the water. So we have temperature difference in R direction. So therefore, our shell is supposed to have thickness in R direction to be delta R. Okay? Or you can say that shell is supposed to be perpendicular to the direction of the flux. We have flux in R direction, so that shell is supposed to be perpendicular to it. That would give you the same picture. So either way, just look for the flux or look for the temperature difference. You should get the same picture of shell. Okay? So now, we have to have input, output, right? What is input? Normally, our input would be flux multiplied by area perpendicular to it. So flux in this case would be E in R direction at R multiplied by area perpendicular to it. What is area perpendicular to this flux? 2 pi R L. Okay. Of course, you can write ER to be QR. Because according to this equation here, velocity is zero. So ER is basically QR. Similar thing, for output, you would have ER at R plus delta R. What is the area? Some of you would think the area is supposed to be outer area. That means 2 pi r plus delta r l, right? That's the outer area of the cylindrical shell. Okay? However, this form and that form are not in the same form yet. So in order to manipulate them or change them into the same form, I'm going to write down something like this, 2 pi L ER or R ER at R plus delta R. Can I do that? We did that before in previous example, right? So for input, it would be the same thing, 2 pi L R, E, R, at R.
Okay? Then we have in, out, this in, out term. Is there any work done by external force? This term. Is there any? No, there is no external force. So this term will be zero. What about this term? This term is definitely not zero because we supply work in other form, in electricity form. So this work would be represented by the term production. Uh, from the problem statement, the heat produced given here has unit of joule per volume or per square meter of, I'm sorry, per cubic meter of the wire. So in order to get the same unit in our equation, the equation is supposed to be joule per second. Oh, I'm sorry, this one joule per second cubic meter. We need to multiply by the volume. What is the volume? So we start by production rate per volume, multiply by volume itself. What is the volume? That's the volume of your shell. It's a shell volume. Shell volume here is supposed to be the area of the ring here multiplied by the height of the shell. Some of you would say the area of the ring correctly is supposed to be pi r plus delta r square subtracted by pi r square. This is the area of the ring, right? But if you do that, then it would be a different form from here. Manipulation of the equation to get differential equation would be impossible. So we have to make some approximation. If our shell is very, very thin, this is delta r. The thickness of this is very thin. You can make approximation. Just like when you have cylindrical shell and then you cut it up, spread it out, you get like a square shell. Okay? The length here can be approximated to be 2 pi r. And the thickness here is just delta r. So the area supposed to be 2 pi r delta r times L, which is the height, you get volume. 2 pi r delta r L. That's the volume. Okay? Plug it in the shear balance. 2 pi L R Q R at R minus 2 pi L R Q R at R plus delta R plus 2 pi L, which is also a common term, R delta R S E equal to zero at steady state. So 2 pi L out. You can divide everything by delta R. So if you divide the whole thing by delta R, this delta R is out, right? Then you can take a limit. The limit here, if you bring all terms here to the right hand side, that would give you differentiation. D of R Q R by dr equal to the rest here, R S C. All right. Then it's just simply integration. We integrate it R Q R equal to R S C square per divided by two plus C one. This is integration. Now we have C one. 
So we ha you have two choices. First is determine C1 at this stage. If you do so, it means that you will need to know QR at one particular point in system. Or secondly, if you do not know that boundaries, replace QR by Fourier law, convert it into temperature, then you get another constant. That means you will need to know temperature at two spots in your system. Which path would you take? Do you know anything about heat in our system? If you say no, I'm going to ask again, do you know temperature, two points of temperature in your system? Where? At R equal to capital R, T is equal to T0. That's one. Where is another? At the core, at R equal to zero, what is temperature? T, that's not, not given. You do not know, right? So in this case, you cannot go further. You need to find out boundary condition at this stage. What is it? At R equal to zero. This is your boundary at R equal to zero. What is the boundary? What is zero? C1 is zero. Why? Because this is zero, this is zero, so C1 is zero. It will give you correct results, but bad ex explanation, okay? The proper way to do it, you said at r equal to zero, QR is not infinite. Because if QR is infinite, zero times infinite may not be zero. Right? So as long as the QR at the center is not infinite, this term would be definitely be zero. And as a result, you get C1 equal to zero. Or, if you're confused, or you, you may convert this equation, use Fourier law, convert them into minus RK dt by dr equal to R squared over 2SC plus C1. And then you can use boundary condition at R equal to zero dt by dr supposed to be zero. Why, we, why can't I do that? Simply because if you look into the cross section of the wire, temperature outside here is T0, temperature inside is supposed to be somewhere higher. But this is symmetry. So temperature profile is suspected to be inverted. So there will be inflection point at this step here, at this point located at the center, the slope of the line of the temperature profile is supposed to be zero. Then you get this one. Okay? So R is zero, this term is zero, this term is zero. You can see one zero as well. Either way, you can do it. All right? So if C1 is zero, I can drop this term and replace it by Fourier law, then I get this term. 